In the early 20th century, humans harnessed the Sandy River. A dam turned the waters flowing off Mount Hood into a machine to produce electricity. It took seven years to build Marmot Dam starting in 1906. The structure blocked about 100 upstream miles to fish. Now nearly 100 years later, the river will once again run free. Only those letting it loose are in for a surprise. In one sense, it's very sad to see this go, but the time has come to say goodbye. Portland General Electric hosts a demolition party. Three, two, one. Amid that cloud of concrete grit and colorful special effects dust for the TV news cameras, Portland General Electric takes the first step towards demolishing Marmot Dam. The explosion softened things up. Now heavy machines can move in to chisel the dam apart piece by piece. You hate to see any renewable energy get off of the grid. This was a project that's time had come. With the conditions it faced in terms of its age, some of the fish issues we faced, it was just the right time. The decision came down to money. PGE faced enormous costs to maintain the structure and to improve the chances fish had of getting past the dam. Even with a $17 million price tag for demolition, it was cheaper to tear out the dam and give up the small amount of power it generated. The only thing keeping Marmot Dam dry and the demolition workers is a temporary coffer dam made of dirt a few feet upstream. It diverts the river around the dam while it's being demolished. There's no going back on this. This has got to get done for these guys to get out of the river before the coffer dam breaches. Crews built that coffer dam from the very sand and gravel that has piled up behind Marmot Dam over 94 years. Once Marmot Dam is gone, what will they do with those 100,000 dump truck loads of sediment? This is where a gamble comes in. 23 different organizations in this project agree to try something unprecedented they're not going to dig the sediment out. PGE project manager John Essler says they've decided to wait for the rainy season and let the river wash the century of silt downstream. The thinking by the agencies and the environmental groups was it's natural material, it's nothing toxic in the material, and the river handles lots of material. The, the river's named the Sandy for a reason. They know the sudden release of one million cubic yards of sediment could bury fish habitat downstream. For us, I think long term, the sediment is probably the biggest concern we have and how that might impact fisheries. PGE biologist Doug Kramer says just in case, they're prepared to dig out sand if it smothers spawning beds or blocks tributaries. Plus, he acknowledges there's a lot they just don't know. In those areas where we really don't know and there's potentials for go wrong, we've tried to estimate if something does go wrong, what would that be and how do you mitigate that at the time? They also don't know exactly how the coffer dam will fail. The diversion canal's blocked. Okay, here we go. The National Center for Earth Dynamics at the University of Minnesota built a mock-up and then flooded it. Oh, you look at there, underneath, underneath. Yep. Look at that, look at that, underneath, underneath, underneath. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. The water came through the model dam, not over it. Wow, look at that thing go! <laughs> Woo! The model might predict the dam's behavior. But in real life, it's not likely to happen in 13 okay. seconds. The big unknown is how long will it take for the river to move all that silt out of its way? The experts' predictions proved wildly off. Um, it could take many years to move out, and it could take uh, relatively quickly, in, in a year. The release of the sediment is probably going to happen over a time scale of, of, of weeks to months. I mean, if Both we men here, got it wrong. It's a good day for a dam breach. A strong storm moved in unexpectedly early. It's mid-October and the river is rising fast. This is a very exciting day. I have been thinking about this day. We have been studying this river for years, really, in anticipation of it. This is the first time that a dam removal involving a significant release of sediment has occurred anywhere to my knowledge. Hydrologist Gordon Grant has studied the Sandy River for the U.S. Forest Service. It's a perfect experiment because we're actually going to see what a river does 
when it's fed this huge quantity of sediment and has to digest it and move it downstream. Crews turn off the pumps, which have kept the coffer dam dry and stable for months. The river begins soaking into the dam. It is time for one remaining fish rescue. A trap below the dam must be cleared. Salmon had tried to make it upstream, and these will make it. Trucked above the dam and dumped in the river. They are the last to make it before their river changes forever. Within a few minutes, the first trickle appears on the face of the 55-foot tall coffer dam. The river is making it through in one small spot. Workers decide to give it some help. The last heavy machine on the dam happens to be a forklift. They improvise and use it to carve a notch to help the river choose a new path. I think we're going to learn a lot about how rivers work. Then they block the diversion channel. The water has nowhere to go except over or through the dam. Oh man, this is so cool. This is just so cool. I mean, look at this thing now. Look at it cutting. The forklift spends more than 30 precarious minutes atop a dam which is becoming more and more saturated. And they're just widening the breach point and the channel's starting to cut. And it's cutting in these, these really turbulent hydraulic jumps. The river is roaring now. Whoa, man, things are moving now. This is the geological knife right here. I mean, this is a geological knife. Look at this thing go, man. This is, this is just awesome. This is just awesome. Whoa, man. The notch becomes a full-fledged waterfall. Amazing, amazing, unbelievable. The river has found another path too. It is less visible. The dam itself is liquefying. Holy smokes, look at this canyon here. As sunlight fades, half the dam is gone. USGS time-lapse cameras keep rolling. They capture the unthinkable. The violence of the Sandy River's unleashed energy consumes the entire coffer dam by the very next day. I'm real surprised. Um, the models that we had showed material staying up here. I expected to see it look more like this at the end of a full winter of high flows, and we've had one moderate flow. Four days after the washout, the entire upper reservoir sits empty. If I had been standing here at this time on Friday, I would be under about 20 feet of sediment and whatever amount of water was left in the reservoir. The predictions of months or a year to clear out the sediment were way off. All that rock, gravel, and sand disappeared in just hours. Downstream, the sediment has moved through, leaving behind a network of sandbars and channels, its ideal habitat. Fish swim past the former dam site within three days. For the first time in a century, the Sandy River runs free, uninterrupted from the flanks of Mount Hood to the Pacific Ocean. No one alive could recall what the Sandy River looked like before the dam, but the river remembered. It's what you would have expected to see in a year or so. The river's clearly returning to a natural state.